Well, the way to understand liberal education uh, comes uh, from the word liberal, and the way to understand the word liberal is not to understand it as opposed to conservative. So liberal doesn't mean as opposed to conservative. Uh, liberal doesn't mean as opposed to stingy. Liberal comes from the Latin word libera, which means free. And so the way to understand liberal education is as free education. And so then there's a question is what, what, what is free education, right? And that debate goes back, you know, even to times before Christ, to ancient times. And there's a dialogue by Plato, the Gorgias, in which the question, what is freedom, is discussed. And one of the characters in Plato's dialogues, Callicles, one of the characters in the Gorgias, Callicles, he has one view of freedom, and his view of freedom is that freedom is license. And uh, license would just be simply to choose whatever you desire, and uh, no matter what that may be. And so then he thinks that the truly free man, the most free man, is the tyrant, because the tyrant can choose whatever pleasures he wants, whatever pleasures of the bed, pleasures of the table, so on and so forth he wants. Uh, but Socrates, the character Socrates in the dialogue, opposes that view and says that, in fact, the tyrant is the most slavish man, and because he doesn't tr choose what he truly desires, rather he chooses what he thinks he desires. And that's the distinction. So he doesn't, the, the tyrant doesn't know what will truly make him happy. And what's truly choice worthy will be what will make you happy. And therefore, because the tyrant chooses his passions over his reason, and the reason is more what makes you human, and therefore more what will make you happy, the tyrant if he operates like a tyrant, seeking the pleasures of the bed and the pleasures of the table, then he'll be unhappy, and therefore, and therefore he'll be slavish, because the things that he chooses will make him unhappy. So uh, Socrates' view of freedom is, is, uh, is the man who is able to choose what is most choice-worthy, or make the choices that will make him happy. And that's the sense of liberal education that we have. So true liberal education is the education that uh, enables a man, insofar as education can enable a man to be happy. And so, um, so as opposed to an education that would enable a man to make money or enable a man to make fine art that may be pleasant, or something of that sort. Liberal education would be the education that makes one happy. And, and so then there's, of course, the further question of what sort of knowledge, which is what education gives, maybe not uh, exclusively, but primarily, uh, what sort of education would enable one to be happy? And so, if, so to answer that question, you have to go back to well, what, you have to go back to some sort of question about what is man and what would be fulfilling for man, and therefore, you, and therefore you have to look at man's reason, because what's distinctive of a human being is his reason, and therefore in some way, something that would, an education that would fulfill his mind would be truly fulfilling for him. Uh, and, and, you know, a sign of this, there are maybe a number of signs, signs of this that you could take. One sign is just, say, the, the, um, the power that uh, the screen the, uh, has, the technology has, has over us. So, you know, it, on the computer, you have things that uh, fulfill your senses and your imagination and even your intellect. And the reason why, you know, a human being could sit in front of a screen for three, four, or five hours a day is because uh, the screen offers uh, fulfillment to those intellectual um, 
or knowing faculties. Your knowing faculties are your sense, your imagination, your memory, your reason, and the screen offers that. And so the reason why the, the screen is so fulfilling of those faculties is because it offers something that's fulfilling of those fac faculties. Uh, and the reason why I bring that up is just because it's a sign that human beings desire to have their knowing faculties fulfilled. And therefore, a liberal education, an education choice worthy, would be an education that fulfills your knowing faculties. Uh, and then the question is, well, what education would fulfill your knowing faculties? And that then, therefore, would go, go back to, well, what would be most desirable to know? And uh, so, for example, uh, some of the, you know, uh, supposedly fathers of the conservative movement, say Alan Bloom or Leo Strauss, they think, they think the, the education in what is man that would be uh, truly fulfilling of your knowing faculties and that would make you happy. Um, but ultimately, uh, I think that fails because man is not a perfect being and therefore knowing about an imperfect being won't fulfill you. Rather, we desire to know things that are perfect, things that are truly true in the perfect sense. And therefore, we, we need to turn our gaze to something more noble and so the pagans thought that the liberal education was finally ordered to metaphysics because in metaphysics you study the first causes and ultimately the first of all causes God. And so liberal education should be ordered to metaphysics. And if you're a Christian like I am, then, then, you, then you think, well, there, there comes even a science above metaphysics, which is theology which supersedes but does not exclude or is not in contradiction to metaphysics, that, would, um, that, that is the study of the precepts revealed to us by God. So we think that God revealed certain truths to us, and then the consideration of those truths and the implication of those truths would be um, the most fulfilling education possible for a human being. And therefore, liberal education would finally, from, uh, from, someone who, from a Christian perspective or a Catholic perspective, would be ordered to theology. And then by ordering, taking theology of the apex, as the apex, then you need the tools to do philosophy. So then you, the, your education has to be ordered through metaphysics, because metaphysics gives you the ability to study theology and ethics and politics. And then to do those disciplines, you need further lower disciplines, and therefore you would need, say, natural philosophy and science and poetics to do ethics. And then below that, you would need grammar and you would need mathematics. And so the whole of education can be put um, in such a way such that it's ordered to education, but ultimately it doesn't get rid of the other disciplines, but rather it ennobles them and gives them their place uh, in an order to something higher, and that's uh, our understanding of liberal education.